Welcome back to Indianapolis this week. We turn now to the race for Senate here in Indiana. And to do that, we're joined by Republican candidate Eric Holcomb. Eric, thanks so much for being here yeah, this Yeah, great morning. to be back. And before we talk about the race for Senate, let's talk about Governor Whitcomb. You were uh, very close to him, and I know uh, this week's news was rough. Yeah, heartbreaking. Um, I'm sure, knowing him, that he's shaking up heaven right now. And uh, glad he is there and um, thinking about his family. But what a guy. I mean, Hollywood could not do it justice, his story. And he always obviously answered our state's call and our nation's call uh, at the times that we needed him the most. But uh, I sure will miss him and so will just thousands of Hoosiers. People revered this man all over the world. I mean, his story had no boundary. Let's talk about the race itself now. When it comes to fundraising, you're falling behind both Marlon Sutzman and Todd Young. Is that an indication of anything going forward into May? No, not at all. I mean, I'm actually encouraged that um, we're able to continue to grow as much as we do every single day. That's a real sign of strength in, in, my, uh, in my experience. Um, we are people powered and locally driven. Every day I'm able to measure who has, who, you know, the new folks that have signed on board. The message is resonating. The organization is growing. So I couldn't be more proud. I haven't, haven't raised a million dollars in Washington, D.C. And that may be what is a good indicator for me that uh, I am not dependent on. We'll have the resources to get our message out. If You may not be counting, but we're 87, 88 days away from the primary election on May 3rd. Uh, and we're, we have a plan to get our message out uh, across the whole state of Indiana. But I, I think, quite honestly, and what is really working is there's no substitute for showing up in person. And I'm kind of in perpetual motion and on the ground and growing this thing very locally. And if you look at everyone from all walks of life, different experiences, different perspectives that are signing on board uh, this uh, campaign, um, it's very encouraging. So I'm, I'm, I think we're where we need to be right now. I feel almost liberated to be able to go to all 92 counties. Last year, I announced in late March, and uh, we, we made a really uh, a point to visit all 92 counties again. It wasn't my first time being to all 92 counties, but I went back, put 25,000 plus miles on the car. The, the circumference of the earth is 24,901 miles. So we literally drove around the world all inside of Indiana. You spent some time on WGN Radio in Chicago. They were asking about what's right in Indiana, comparing it to Illinois' floundering financial situation. I'll ask you the reverse. What's wrong in Indiana right now? What can the Hoosier State improve on? We need to fix our national, on the national front. I mean, we are doing, we're kind of clicking on all cylinders. We are, we are leading the pack. We are the envy of the nation in so many of the all important categories. And it's because of, may I say, Republican leadership over the last decade plus. We turned this state around, got headed in the, in the right direction, but what we're up against our national policies that are holding us back. And I hear about this, whether I'm in rural areas or urban areas, it doesn't matter where I go, folks are concerned about not just our national security, but our economic security. It's just a complete contrast, uh, a, a tale of two cities, really, so to speak, Washington, D.C. And, and Indiana. Uh, when you think about our financial portfolio and our situation here in Indiana, AAA credit rating, um, we've we, we took a $800 million debt and we converted it into a $2 billion surplus. Uh, and then when you look at the national front, what we're up against, we're up against this tax code that strangles us, regulations that strangle us, and $19 trillion. I used to say $18, $18 trillion national government debt. Now it's $19 trillion. We're on uh, two parallel paths to uh, bankruptcy when we're, when we're talking about Social Security and Medicare. So we're not addressing the things that are really driving this debt, and now we're ushering in more deficit spending. So it's, it's a complete contrast, the state business and the national business. We got to get our, our national government sorted out and uh, apply some real big, bold solutions to the bold problems, just like we did starting in 2005 um, and, and continuing through to today. And finally, on the Super Bowl Sunday, do you have a prediction going into the big game? Oh, Peyton all the way. I mean, again, Hollywood couldn't write a better story. And so I see a, I see a two-point win and probably a, in the last two seconds, uh, Peyton coming through. We'll see. That's why they play the game. That's right. Eric Holcomb, thanks so great much for being here. Great to see you. Have a great day. Much more to come on Indianapolis this week right after this.